The opening title montage introduces the 1996 film Freeway as a modern adaptation of Little Red Riding Hood. A suspender sporting wolf licks his chops with sexual rather than physical hunger. Thus the predator foreshadowed in the movie transgresses his own nature of an intelligent hunter and is driven by something far more sinister. In the real world, people's motives are not as obvious as portrayed in cartoons. In the fairytale spirit of Little Red Riding Hood, Freeway cautions us to see beyond the everyday masquerades of men and remain wary of animals lurking beneath the shadows. We aren't surprised that Vanessa Lutz's mother turns tricks during the middle of the day, or that her stepfather casually pounds hits from a crack pipe. But the easy mark, a shy and nerdy John, turns out to be an undercover sheriff. Behind the safety of his badge, another deputy takes sick pleasure seeing the frail, stilted addict subdued. These facades, whether a manifestation of living conditions or an act of deception, continue an important theme throughout the film. It's clear from the beginning that Freeway is not your typical live-action fairy tale. Writer-director Matthew Bright elevates fringe members of society, traditionally relegated as screen villains, to the moral forefront. By the same token as bad guys who pose as youth counselors, heroes can take the guise of illiterate delinquents. The cat drinks milk. Bright broke from many of his peers and preferred to revisit taboo themes that emerged from Poverty Row films from the late 1940s to early 60s. Much like Vanessa in Freeway, protagonist Kelly in Samuel Fuller's The Naked Kiss bears the burden of proving her claims of self-defense against a prejudiced community. In Fuller's black and white universe, prostitutes trade whorehouses for hospitals and corrupt cops risk careers for the greater good of justice. The town virgin. What an act! <laughs> <laughs> Amongst more contemporary films, Freeway proves increasingly difficult to draw useful comparisons. Though it's not the first subversive adaptation of a story already fraught with Freudian themes. Director Bright presents an original work that is too unpredictable for us to look away. This isn't an easy task, considering that we've known the story of Little Red Riding Hood since we could understand language. Violence is utilized mostly as a means to endure and favors realism over gore. Vanessa reluctantly shoots her captor, not for revenge, but to prevent others from suffering the same fate, self-justified by her off-kilter moral imperative. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is your Lord and personal Savior? <laughs> yes, I do. I swear. Good. <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> good. Vanessa's paradoxically naive worldview is antithetical to vigilante Paul Kersey in the Death Wish franchise, whose own gaze resembles a rifle scope viewfinder. In his crosshairs, every penniless punk loiterer, streetwalker, and wino is civilization's unwanted debris. In Freeway, Vanessa depends on her fellow so-called undesirables for survival. I'll get you another one, bendejo. Contrary to Little Red Riding Hood's remote forest trail, the path well traveled is the most perilous route to Grandma Lutz's trailer park. After Vanessa's janky ride predictably stalls, Freeway's use of dramatic irony is purposefully conspicuous. The audience knows Bob Wolverton, who stalks his prey on Interstate 5, is the wolf before he even reveals his name. So, uh, what'd I call you? I'm sorry, my name is Bob Wolverton. Uh, I'm Vanessa Lutz. Well, it's nice to meet you, Vanessa. Well, I think I can help you. At every point during the wayward duo's interactions, he pries too hard. You're going to have to let me in disrespects personal space, and initiates physical contact at any chance. Dramatic irony also extends to Bob's intended victim. We know from the opening scenes that pistol-toting Vanessa is far too street-savvy for an easy target. But the predator only senses her vulnerability and a serendipitous opportunity to satisfy his hunger for sadism. 
Likewise, Freeway seeks to downplay the monster's mystique, and instead emphasizes the sordid procedural elements of its crimes, breaking down all of Bob's charming pretenses. The first half of the film is a textbook case study of a sexual serial killer attempting to groom his next victim. Say it out loud, Freeway implies, from the pair's initial encounter, that we expect a monster to resemble one on the outside. And although many do, we often turn a blind eye to warning signs of the law students or church council members masquerading as functioning members of society. And I felt all the malanky little hairs on my plot standing endwise. Freeway's director asks, perhaps indirectly, why are we so enamored with psychopaths? At least for those who don't rape or kill, we turn greedy free market wolves into folk heroes, their victims' life savings, collateral damage to fuel opulent lifestyles that we can only conjure in daydreams. Venturing into more disturbing subject matter, the dark side of our psyche allows us to enjoy creative gore, as long as the violence is make-believe. But we can't forget that horror movies are inspired by actual serial killers, who may even be portrayed as likable psychopaths based on their class or cultural tastes. Did you like it when Larry fucked you up the ass? In Freeway, Bright unmasks their charm as manipulation, their sophistication as bourgeois excess, their intelligence as insecurity, and their crimes selfish and pathetic. Vanessa, I promise you if we get really, really intimate, you're going to be way past being offended. Unsurprisingly, Freeway convincingly represents social outliers, a quality often lacking in Hollywood films. Chopper Wood, played by Bokeem Woodbine, assumes a suburban incarnation of the folktale lumberjack. Though he indirectly saves Vanessa, Chopper, without his figurative axe, must sacrifice his own life, an unfortunate consequence of racial strife in Southland gang politics. Freeway was one of several contemporaneous films to offer a neorealist depiction of juvenile offenders wading through the criminal justice system, a subject matter that once seemed abstract, if not outright laughable. Bitch, I'm fucking talking to you, man. There's something askew about pole dancing murderers, or a classical guitar playing ginger cholo within the most ethnically diverse LA street gang you've ever seen. Despite Dennis Hopper's sincere attempt to understand his subject matter, lazily monikered Whitey has become an unintended cult favorite, our redheaded stepchild amongst the damned. Not to be outdone, Freeway 2 delivers camp. As to which portions of this are unintentional, I still can't decide. Is that why you shot him? Or was it because you wanted what was in his wallet? I already told you why I shot him, you shit skin motherfucker. Oh. The interstate-adjacent world in which Freeway's forgotten children of junkies inhabit resembles my childhood neighborhood more than any film I've ever seen. Hey, motherfucker. <laughs> At least before soaring property values, exiled rabble like us to more affordable fringes of Southern California's Imperial and Antelope Valleys. Freeway's scattered filming locations within Sunland Los Angeles is carefully curated. However, the actual city is unimportant and never specified in the film. Most scenes could very well resemble blighted suburban corners of Orange County or San Diego, or multitudes of other cities in different states from the mid-90s. We don't sense the salty breeze of the vast Pacific Ocean that loosely borders the I-5 throughout Southern California. Instead, we can almost feel the hot, dusty Santa Ana winds from the Mojave Desert leaking through our screens a weather precursor to human violence if we trust the unscientific musings of Raymond Chandler. Opposite a privileged teen treading herpes-infested waters for the sake of self-discovery in Francois Ozone's Young and Beautiful, Vanessa and her classmates resort to sex work out of sheer desperation. The money. We thought it'd be all grown up turning tricks on Warren Avenue right outside the snack and shop. We now regard it as illegal trafficking, a 
and some even attempt to portray it as such in film. But quite the opposite held true in 1996. He's only going to jack him off is all. Director Bright's intentions are not to reverse decades of cinematic existentialist hookers with his own flavor of cinema verite. Rather, it is important for Freeway to establish the environmental conditions that compel children to flee hardship and make them susceptible or endangered to serial killers. You can do that. Look who got beat with the ugly Besides Matthew Bright's auteur touch, the crucial ingredient that elevates Freeway to cult favorite is creative collaboration with the actors. Vanessa Letts' Southern Brogue, with a southwestern tinge, is less paradoxical and more tragic when placed against her mother's East Coast metropolitan inflection. But actor Reese Witherspoon's interpretation of Little Red Riding Hood truly comes to life through her character's delicate mix of innocence with street savvy. It recalls Giulietta Messina's masterful rendition of a weathered prostitute gullibly blinded by the prospect of true love in Federico Fellini's Knights of Cabiria. By the same token, the duality with which Kiefer Sutherland plays Bob Wolverton is also noteworthy. Freeway is worth a second or tenth viewing just to re-watch this long, uninterrupted take of the actor taking a few real-life bops to the head for the team. Ah, Jesus Christ, we're gonna get into an accident! That's a cut out my hair, you fucker! I'm your granddaughter, I'm here Beyond the time-trusted adage that we should not judge a book by its cover, Freeway reminds us that we live in a twisted world where we blindly trust the wolf but discredit Little Red Riding Hood. Big, ugly fucking teeth you got, Bob. Matthew Bright challenges us to reject the notion of psychopathy as a revered trait and implores us to instead embrace society's wretched refuse. Somewhat opposite of a modern revenge fantasy, Vanessa avoids viewing the world through the cynical lens expected from her personal experience. You got a cigarette? In many ways, Freeway is the definitive modern interpretation of a cautionary folktale that still holds true. <laughs>